because there isn't such a thing as a soul or a mind. There's only your body. It's materialism. They believe that you are not a man, but a collection of atoms. And give that body to the state for the collective effort of the... That's right. Mm -hmm. For the good of the whole and sacrifice to the state. And whoever says it is or wants to be the state. <laughs> Ayn Rand will be back in a moment. I was interested in your remarks on special education and particularly on gifted education. We in the public schools can identify gifted children, we can categorize their strengths and their needs, but we don't have the dollars to do what needs to be done. What in your opinion is our society's responsibility to these children who will be our leaders? To begin with, I don't believe that society has any responsibility towards anyone, N neither the future leaders nor the future victims. Society has nothing to do, properly speaking, with the life of any one person except to keep out of his way and give him a chance uh, in a proper, that is totally free society. Nothing will be done for the gifted except voluntarily. If his parents are poor and the general trend of the society is not towards helping the ungifted, it's not altruistic, then Private individuals and free institutions will help him if his parents are poor. But in a free society, predominantly, all that the gifted child needs is some decent, rational education instead of the boredom that makes them give up school today. Because a lot of the gifted children, you know, are drop out. Because they're bored in a class devised for less gifted children. And uh, just leave them alone and preach the idea that human ability is a value. When you say that society has no responsibility here, you s I think individuals have a responsibility to themselves. Is that it? I don't like the word responsibility involved here. All right. Well, what should uh, we say then? Help me. What do I... Uh, do what I wish to do. Is that your point? That the more... No. Do what I rationally think is right according to the right morality. Uh, and help others if you can, but not as a primary obligation. And now in regard to society, there is no such thing as society, you know. It's all of us. Now, how can we have obligations which we didn't undertake? See, the parents of a child would have obligations for him up to a certain age, since they brought, brought him into the world, but they can't do what is impossible to them. So that doesn't mean that, that they can at any moment s throw the burden on the rest of us. We're society, everybody's society, and we can't have unearned obligations and unchosen obligations. Um, my husband and I got married because of you. I just wanted you to know that. <laughs> we met and uh, were the only two people we could find that liked your works <laughs> and, and gravitated toward each other. I was wondering... Um, that was a long time ago. A long time ago when, when no Thank one... You. you. weren't very popular at the time. <laughs> um, I was wondering what... Without being a, a, a lengthy about it, what attracted you to Miss Ray? I mean, what did you like? I liked the idea of not being ashamed to be proud of what I am and who I am. And that's basically it. Do you feel there's pressures? Uh, In today's society, I think there's a great deal of pressure. Isn't, isn't American chauvinism one of the uh, issues that we all have to look at and, and examine in terms of what it may lead us to do that may not be in our own long-term best interest? In other words, we are accused of being breast beaters who never can By commit who? error. I really don't see that as a problem. I see as a problem uh, what she was talking about in Iran, where we uh, have the technology, the intelligence, and everything else, give it to everybody else, and then all of a sudden we turn out to be the bad guys. Where, where is the justice? I, I'm... You agree? Uh, do I agree with the speaker? Oh, yes. Completely. 
But what was your question? Uh, my question was, my question is a frivolous one of uh, what do you think of the architecture in Chicago after writing The Fountainhead and studying, oh, I'm sure, much of I haven't been in Chicago for years, so I can answer only that I love the early Frank Lloyd Wright building, so, which there are several in Chicago and in your suburbs, and the early Sullivan buildings, which I hope are preserved as a landmark. But I haven't seen any new buildings well, for at least see, 10 years. You must see our skyline. Well, there's another book down there. Just, oh, uh, with pleasure. We'll be back with Ayn Rand in just a moment. Miss Rand, I was one of those people who belonged to your cult where we were devouring your books, and I just wanted to say that as I matured, I am glad that I was able to differentiate Did with you your philosophy. Did you see our show last year? Do you want to create an incident? No. No. Pa no. Pass it up. No. I'm right. not a cult. Okay. Anyway. Oh, all right. No, I didn't mean that. I just meant that we admired your work and still do in many ways. But I'm glad now that as the emphasis today, as everyone talks of the me society, I have different feelings thinking that there are many parts of your philosophies that do emphasize and create so, another me society. So, and, and, and what's wrong with that? Well, I just feel that I know Ms. Rand does not like the word responsibility, but as I matured, I became more responsible, I feel, and I realized that there is another world around me other than just myself and my family. And I don't. And if I didn't, why would I be here or speaking to you at all, and why would I write? No. I, I don't disagree with that. Thank you. And I, I realize that, but I also feel that there are so many things that, in, in many ways, you're trying to create an elitist society, and today that just is not practical. What uh, has she said that makes sure? If you want to spread your views, in today's society, you have every opportunity, you, more than you can count. Why come here and take advantage of my show and of people who came here to see and hear me, not the leaders who put responsibility on your shoulder. You want responsibility? Go and practice it. But you're not going to force any responsibility on me. Well, and certainly not but she's for not, your But she has to be able to, sh to share with you her opinion, however differing it may be from no. what you oh. Oh. Because I know you don't mean to, and I know we've been here before. Do you feel some sense of deja vu with this? A little. Uh, you, when you say that, you sound intolerant of those who would dissent from your position. No, there is a, a distinction that has been very okay, intentionally uh, modeled. I do not, and I've said repeatedly, I don't want to interfere with anyone or force anything on them. You have to make those distinctions voluntarily and yourself. Yeah. The distinction is, let the whole world disagree with me if it wants to doesn't mean that if I want to be tolerant, I will change my ideas. Well, I want to hold only my ideas. I don't approve of those who preach the opposite, and I don't think that the freedom to utter nonsense is the first freedom. The freedom is but, your right to yes, your I life. I don't think you want the responsibility of deciding what in every case is nonsense. No. You right. know what what so, my policy is? I don't deal with those who disagree. All right, well, they, they don't agree, fine, they shouldn't deal with me. <laughs> but just think of the fun you're missing. I mean, you're... <laughs> That's different. That depends on your idea of fun. Oh, a good, vigorous exchange of views between two people who care and have differing positions is one of the most instructive uh, things that can happen I would in a living room or on television. I would love to see an honorable adversary, but I've stopped hoping for it. Uh, but that's an arrogant position. What you're, you're saying is all those who disagree with me are not honorable. That's what you're saying. Not honorable in their ideas. I don't judge them personally or psychologically. Honorable is a judgment. It's the worst kind I of I have judgment. to know something about a person's attitude and knowledge in regard to his or her ideas before but I say I can't this give you a psychiatric honorably. report on everybody who would disagree uh, uh, with you. Wait a moment. But can't we deal with the issues right at the surface? She made a comment that, that she 